Who were the Pilgrims' first friends? Indians were the Pilgrims' first and best friends. On March 16, 1621, three months after the Pilgrims landed at Pil Plymouth, a tall Indian walked into the village. He was stark naked, wrote Edward Winslow, only a leather about his waist. Welcome, Englishman, the Indian said, and he held out his hand in a friendly way. The boys and girls of Plymouth had never seen an Indian before. Now an Indian was standing right next to them, and he was speaking English. His name was Samoset. He told the pilgrims that he had learned English from visiting English fishermen. He told the pilgrims all about the Indian tribes nearby. The place the pilgrims called Plymouth was called Patusic by the Indians. About four years before, a strange sickness had killed everyone in the Patusic tribe, but there were other Indians nearby. Samoset himself was visiting the Wampanoag Indians ruled by Chief Massasoit. Samoset spent the night in Plymouth. When he left, the pilgrims gave him a knife, a ring, and a bracelet. Two days later, later, Samoset was back. He brought five Indians with him, five hungry Indians. The pilgrims gave them food, and re in return, the Indians sang and danced. Samoset came back four days later. This time, he brought along an Indian named Squanto. Squanto stayed in Plymouth. He stayed with the pilgrims for the rest of his life. It was lucky for the pilgrims that he did. Squanto was the pilgrims' best friend. What did the pilgrims learn from Squanto? Squanto showed the pilgrims where the fish swam and how to catch them. He showed them where to hunt deer, turkey, and other animals. He showed them where the wild plants and herbs grew and how to use herbs to make their food taste better. He told them when to plant corn. He showed them how to plant their kernels of corn in little hills, along with three fish in each hill to make the corn grow better. How did the pilgrims and the other Indians get along? The pilgrims could walk as safely in the woods as on the highways of England, wrote Edward Winslow. Squanto helped to arrange a meeting between Chief Massasoit and Governor Carver. Chief Massasoit came to Plymouth with 20 Indian braves. He wore a chain of white bone beads around his neck. His face was covered with oil and painted a dark red. All the Indians were painted, some black, some red, some yellow. Some of the Indians wore animal skins. The pilgrims and the Indians greeted one another. They ate and drank together. Then Chief Massasoit and Governor Carver got to work on a peace treaty. What were the terms of the peace treaty? The pilgrims and the Indians made some agreements. The pilgrims and the Indians promised they would never attack each other. When the Indians came to Plymouth, they would leave their bows and arrows behind, they said. And when the pilgrims visited the Indians, they would leave their guns behind. There, were no, there would be no stealing. Each would help the other if an enemy attacked. The peace treaty was not put in writing, but peace between the uh, pilgrims and the Indians lasted for 54 years. Would you live in a log cabin? No. The pilgrims had never seen a log cabin. The houses they built in Plymouth were the same kind of houses that they lived in back in England, but the houses in Plymouth were much smaller. They had steep roofs covered with a kind of straw called thatch. There was no glass in Plymouth. The windows were made of paper or cloth. The paper or cloth was rubbed with fat to let some light in. The first houses had only one big room with a room upstairs called a loft. Some people slept in the loft. Where would you sleep? You would have to sleep on the Mayflower until your house in Plymouth was finished. Some people lived on the Mayflower until the end of March, almost four months after the Pilgrims landed in Plymouth. When your, your house was finished, you would sleep on the floor until you had time to make a mattress. 
You would sleep on the mattress until you had time to make a bed. Beds for grown-ups were made first. Grown-ups put their mattresses on top of rope springs. You were lucky if you were one of the few pilgrims who had a feather bed. Feather beds were linen bags filled with soft goose feathers. In the summertime, you could sleep on top of it. It made a soft mattress. In the wintertime, you could sleep under it. It made a warm blanket. Small children slept in a bed called a trundle bed. The trundle bed was kept under the grown-up's big bed during the day. At night, it was pulled out. Babies slept in cradles. Children seven years old or older slept upstairs in the loft.